many people have heard the story of how my dad tried to enroll four of us a few days before the opening of Thomas Aquinas College down at the old campus. He had been tearing his hair out with disappointment over what was available in higher education. So he brought us out and he just mentioned that we sang. Heard later, Dr. MacArthur immediately went through his mind, oh, they're gonna pull out their guitars and start playing their Houdinani mass music. But he gave us a little audition. We sang a little Hostler or Palestrina, I don't remember what it was, but he said, oh, that's great. <laughs> The Thomas Aquinas Choir really kind of grew out of what we'd been doing at home. My sister Maria was the first director and Stephen played the organ. We built up this repertoire of chants and motets and masses, much of which is still what we do today. This college has been blessed with an abundance of students who have musical ability or the willingness to learn and try and do the best they can. Our music director, Dan Grimm, does a great job of opening the choir to participation from across the student body. He doesn't audition students for the choir, but rather opens it to any students that want to participate. And I think that's a great opportunity for students who haven't necessarily had a lot of experience singing, but they're given an opportunity to learn. And Dan Grimm is an excellent teacher. We take any student who wants to come. We also get a fair number of really excellently trained singers. I've been surprised and delighted to find some really splendid voices. The music that our choir performs is very much in keeping with the kind of excellence we're introducing them to in the classroom. And so we've always wanted to provide our students with the best music possible to help them grow in the moral life and grow in their appreciation of truly beautiful things. We tend to learn for the Sunday choir, polyphony and chant. The tradition of the church is certainly to hold chant in sort of the first place and polyphony is a kind of elaboration of the chant. A close second for the concert choir, we learn some larger liturgical works, Bach and Mozart. We also perform a fair amount of Gilbert and Sullivan, some opera, opera excerpts, occasionally full operas. There have been a couple thousand students through the college, and they all know what great church music sounds like. The richness and the ancientness of the church's liturgical music tradition is incomparable. Most of what we call Western classical music is a development of chant and cathedral music. I love that St. Augustine quote, to sing belongs to lovers, cantare amantis est, or the other one, he who sings prays twice. What song expresses is a kind of unity between the movement of the soul and the body. A lot of students here confront maybe for the first time that the choice of music is a moral choice. Plato speaks at length about the importance of music and its formative power on the soul. And he makes the point that young people should expose themselves to excellent music and so have their souls formed in a way that's most conducive to the, to the moral life and the spiritual life. Once you start thinking, yes, music does have an influence on me, that's profound, then you start thinking, what sort of influences should I be pursuing? What's wonderful is that those influences can be hugely valuable so expanding to the mind to really experience the beauty of some of this music.